to today's interview. Uh, I have the pleasure of interviewing Steve Hinn, the Chief Revenue Officer of Oreos. Uh, they are the makers of OnTrack, which is uh, a compliance and uh, uh, it's a compliance platform to bring legitimate certifications, uh, legitimate compliance to law firms and companies of all kinds. Too often, conversations around security have been dominated by let me ask my IT guy about that, and maybe I need a new firewall, but rarely have the conversations extended into more of a comprehensive solution of, hey, are we compliant according to a generally accepted standard, right? Can I broadcast this to my clients to inspire confidence and maybe land more clients? And on track by your company is a really compelling solution that I, I think is highly applicable to firms especially in the new environment, uh, this pandemic, work from home, or, or you know, as you've coined on your website right now, not bring your own device, but bring your own desk environment, right? Right. And this is really a unique set of challenges uh, as to how do we properly manage policies and security to have a truly distributed workforce. It's somewhat unprecedented, especially for law firms. And so, right. Um, I'll kind of, uh, you know, fade to the background here and ask you a few questions, Steve, but uh, love to get started here. So let me, let me, you know, get right out of the gate here and ask you, Steve, uh, what is Oreos uh, and how can it help law firms? Sure. Thank you, Aaron. And again, thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here to work with Inertia. Uh, so Oreos, Oreos is actually a spinoff. Uh, we were spun off at the end of last year. Um, and, and to be, a, as you said earlier, a, an information security management software company. So what does information security management really do? Um, what it does is it allows uh, firms to create, to manage, to analyze, and monitor their information security program. Mm -hmm. And what it, what it provides really is the scaffolding around the uh, best practices methods for firms to, to, to ensure that they're, that they're meeting uh, information security and data privacy compliance standards. Uh, the idea there is at the top levels, it's a very complicated task. And what our platform OnTrack does is it simplifies it. The, the analogy that I like to use is that it, it does for information security what accounting software did for financials years and years ago, right? So at one point prior to QuickBooks and everything we take for granted today, it was, you know, sheets of paper, a lot of um, uh, green, well, I, I still remember this, I hate to say it, green sheets, um, maybe a, you know, a, 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 a primitive spreadsheet, but then all of a sudden, the new wave of desktop software came out and rather than require a large system in the background, you were able to, to manage that on your desktop. Oreos has, has done the same thing. It has developed on track with the idea of making it simple and uh, making the, the real complex problems that are faced by information security managers or anyone interested in it as simple as possible. And, and you mentioned, you know, the work at home. I want to address that because in particular, that has clearly, so our timing tended to be good, right? We didn't know about right. COVID at the time, um, but our timing uh, for better or for worse was pretty good. But, but, but the work at home clearly has changed the environment. And I think it's changed in two ways that are very germane to our conversation and, um, and, and in ways that Oreos can help. The first one I think is really not, uh, is, is overlooked. So uh, working at home is not anything new. Right. It may be new for a lot of companies, but it's not anything new. What you've seen is COVID has uh, caused an acceleration of a trend. I read someplace that it took five years of, of work at home evolution and crammed it into, you know, a week or something to that effect. And, and clearly in setting up workforces and whatnot, uh, security, which was a priority, did fall to the background because you had to get your business up and running. Well, what's interesting about that is we, while we focus on the firm or the organization and how they manage that, what's, what I find fascinating is the fact that what you've done is you've taken a bunch of employees who've never had experience working from home and said, you've got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Now, uh, you know, I'm looking at your video. You seem to have a very nice office. I have a nice little office here with a view. How many people that were forced to work from home don't? Right. How many people are working from a kitchen, uh, uh, you know, a kitchen table or a dining room table or not even at home? They're going to a Starbucks using public Wi-Fi. They're going to <clears throat> a library. Um, and using the library Wi-Fi. So, so the, the burden and impetus on the employee has really been uh, overlooked. And that has caused a tremendous amount of stress on IT departments because rather than having a setup, right? I'm a business development person. I'm, you know, they've set, I've been set up with a laptop and I am by definition mobile because I, I, I travel. Um, now that they're facing all sorts of things, these either even the equipment within the home environment, right? The best security your twenty nine ninety nine router can buy, right? right. And right. your and your firm is relying on that. So that's one thing. And I think that the to add to that uh, is that you know we went from a trickle to a flood, mm -hmm. and that means the complexity has just fundamentally increased. And you know rather than juggle three balls in the air, all of a sudden you have to juggle 10 and figure it out on the fly. And I think that there's been some uh, interesting facts related to the law firms around that. You know, this sure. May, there was a ransomware attack on a New York firm demanded $42 million, right? I read from PwC, 100% of the UK's top 100 firm has had a cyber incident. Wow. Um, and it's not just big firms, too, right? It's smaller firms, uh, firms under 100 lawyers. Uh, one third of them have experienced a cyber incident. And, and if you look at the, the results, uh, in particular on the small firm side, it's devastating, right? I mean, 60% of small businesses go out of business within six months of, wow. a, of a cybersecurity attack. So I think those are all sort of the sobering facts on, on why, you know, one of the reasons why we brought Aureus to the market and why I think its importance has been accelerated in the last few months. Sure, sure. Well, well, I would highlight something too. You know, when you, you have a workforce that all was consolidated into an office and controlled in an office and all of a sudden it's distributed, you know, you mentioned you might have people working from a Starbucks or some of the third party location, but how often is, is the family computer being used for work? You know, how often does that computer do double, triple, quadruple duty with games as well as hosting secure information. Um, and it really can be a challenge. I think that the tendency in the past has really been to almost throw money at the situation. Hey, let's talk to my IT guy. Let's uh, let's hire, you know, kind of this uh, hacker guy you know, down the road, so to say, let's see if we're secure, buy a new router, have some flashy lights in the closet that, that inspires confidence, but it really doesn't bring it down to the brass tacks of are you secure and are you compliant, right? Right. If I go back and, and highlight one other thing too is uh, there's been a, a giant transition uh, in terms of, of how technology is implemented. You know, you look 10, 15, 20 years back and the vast majority of it was hosted locally uh, in a law office or, or company. And, and really now there's hybrid setups where you don't know, um, unless you're doing IT really, what is in the cloud, what's local. Um, and every single law firm at this point has some sort of data stored in the cloud if they really take a heavy analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, furthermore, we're marching all the way forward now, not into just, okay, we have a piece here in the cloud and the rest of it is all at the office under lock and key in a closet. No, we're, we're pretty fully distributed and we're forced into that. And like you said, the complexities have really increased exponentially. And so the conversation I'm so interested in having um, with my own company, as well as clients alike, right, is saying, hmm, you know, what does compliance look like? It's no longer enough to say, hey, there's that new shiny router in the closet that I spent $10,000 on, gives me some warm fuzzies. It really is, how do we know, right? right. But throwing money at the situation, instead uh, apply a standard and really end up with something that inspires confidence in your company, expire, inspires confidence with clients too, so that they know uh, work from home, work from office, whatever, you're secure, you're compliant, and, and really you're ready for what comes ahead, right? Right, 100% agree, 100%. And I'll mention too, you talk about you know the cloud, we, we're, we're we talking about the law firm. Everything we're talking about here goes to the vendors of the law firm too. I'm thinking e-discovery, right? So much, 
you know, data is ingested by third parties with, with firms that do not have, say, in-house um, uh, 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 capabilities, or even if they do, a lot of that's going to be hosted outside. Right. And if you want to make sure, we had a major breach earlier this year of, a, of, a, of one of the largest e-discovery companies, ransomware. Everyone was shut down. So it's not, you know, and, and, and that could happen to anyone, of course. Right. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that a, a what we call, I'll talk about this too, I mean, the security maturity, the ability to take, as you said, a measured holistic approach to compliance is, and information security is incredibly important. Yeah, that's a great way of putting that measured holistic approach. You know, that's 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 the idea at this point. That's what needs to be in place. So let me pivot just for a second here. Let me ask you, while so much of the conversation nowadays is dominated by security and, and the concept of, of getting hacked, let me ask you in a little bit different vein, what are some of the risks of non-compliance for law firms nowadays? Huh. Well, I mean, you know, the law firms often are in the business of, of, of uh, you know, pursuing civil remedies against uh, other firms for non-compliance in other areas. So I, I think that there's, I think there's both direct and indirect consequences. And, and I, I've, I've got, I want to throw something out at the very end here. But, you know, the direct consequences is, you know, there are, you know, there are laws, federal, I mean, there are laws both, you know, at the state, federal and international level that you can be fined for if you are non-compliant, right? There are civil damages from the 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 um, the, the the sort of the the custodians of well, you're the custodian of the of the information. So the information, uh, the the companies who, who have given you their information, yeah. and you know that's gonna and that is gonna have a uh, an impact on your top line, right, uh, or on your bottom line too. So I think those are the direct. Um, um, Impacts. You know, there's an indirect impact as well to the in the reputational risk. One of the things that I think it's important to think about when you talk about information security and data privacy is it's the electronic version of attorney client privilege. If you think about attorney client privilege, that's been around for hundreds of years and it's for a very, very particular purpose. So in the same way, you wouldn't want one of your attorneys at a function or on the train blabbing about, you know, uh, uh, secure uh, uh, confidential client information. You need to protect that client information from theft, you know, because if that information is is stolen and used or put out there, it's the same thing, right? And and the reason and the reason I bring that up, of course, is that reputational risk. If clients can't have confidence that you are going to be um, absolutely one hundred percent compliant in in terms of securing their most sensitive data, they'll find someone who will. Sure. Uh, yeah. The one uh, the one the flip side though is is you know think about compliance. If you're thinking about compliance, there's a positive part too, right? I mean, be able to prove to you know your your clients, to your insurers, your cyber insurer, that you are compliant. Um, that gives you both sort of benefits in terms of I think reduced rates because those are going to be uh, affected, and and of course that becomes a strategic competitive advantage for you as well. Certainly. Well, and, and for a number of our clients too, we've seen larger corporations in state security controls and really make them uh, uphold auditing of their own internal security posture. And, and many times it actually ends up with the firm hiring a full-time individual to, to manage compliance, right? This is a big conversation. Um, that scope of compliance varies for, for firms primarily due to what their customer base or client base looks like at this time. But that's really starting to even out more and more so. Um, and, and we see major, uh, maybe inroads isn't the right term for this, but let's just say it, GDPR, um, the security and privacy standard that the entire European Union you know, must uh, abide by at this point is, is an interesting bellwether of what's to come here eventually for the United States. Uh, we see Trimmers of that too with CCPA, uh, the California Consumer Protection Act, right? Um, again, trying to protect client data, uh, personal data, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so while we have specific 
compliance certifications for the finance industry, uh, for the health industry with HIPAA. You know, law firms have largely been immune to these sort of blanket, uh, um, you know, compliance measures. But as, as we see this rolling out for personal privacy and a general protection guideline, as there is so much data out there, you know, the, the amount of time, kind of the runway to get this done, it is shortening. We don't know when that will be a uniform standard across the entire country and there's some sort of federal or United States, you know, US GDPR or whatever, obviously wouldn't be called that, but you get the idea. The days are numbered at this point, right? Well, I, well, I think that's a phenomenal point. And, and recently, within the last 30 days, the, um, the EU just did a major slap at the data transfer agreements between the US and, and, and the EU. Uh, and while um, there, while the, the, the contractual agreements are still in, in place, um, and, uh, and, I, and I apologize, but the, the phrase is lost on me. Um, it, there was a real impetus. There was basically a shot across the bow for the US to impose a national standard. That doesn't, by the way, change something like CCPA or Illinois Privacy Act or any other state. Because as you know, in addition to GDPR within the you know, European Union, if you take a look at Germany, you have the German Federal Data Protection Act. And within Germany, you know, you, you're dealing with a Bavarian company who's located in Bavaria. You have the Bavarian yeah. version of that, too. So the, you know, this becomes increasingly complex. Uh, and very, very difficult to manage. And, and, but to, I think also to your point, when you, when you mess up, if you're not compliant, you're not just com not compliant with one thing, you're gonna be non-compliant with a slew of regulations that are, are, are affecting the data. Yeah, well, and, and I think it's important to point out, I mean, if you take in all these different standards and you look at your kind of full risk assessment as you're doing business outside of borders and whatnot, I, it almost builds uh, a sense of apathy and saying, oh, well, if we can't be compliant, then why even try? Um, I, I think that there's there's a, an education curve that's necessary with the practice of law at this point, you know, directly around a product like Ant OnTrack, which helps employ, you know, existing uniform uh, uh, security policies to a law firm to help them fast forward. You know, you have a, a Bavarian set of regulations. You have German, uh, Germany as, as a country. So you have regional, then you have a country, and, and then you have a, a collection of countries. And, and there's all kinds of complexity, but there's there's a lot to be said about how do we fast forward through these this litany of options kind of at the bottom of this conversation and say, well, maybe we do need to become ISO certified of some sort. You know, maybe we need to roll out uh, uh, some sort of NIST certification. Um, and, and I don't think that that's top of mind for most law firms or, or really many, you know, SMB type companies, small and medium sized businesses across the board. But again, how do we fast forward? You don't, you don't have to have 10 different compliance officers for your company. You can wrap up the vast majority of that with one internationally accepted policy that can be really largely employed by on track. Am I right about that? No, the, absolutely. I mean, and I think it's it's interesting that you you know you mentioned that. First of all, it does seem daunting, and I and I fully appreciate. It. But you know, every climb to the top of a mountain starts with a step or two. So you know, what we what I say to everyone is, what what you need to do is is uh, assess where you are, assess where you want to go, and then move toward that because. Yeah. So information security is not a switch. There's no magic, you know, thumbs up, you're done. Um, it is it is a, a dial and it's ever evolving. So yeah. that's really, really important. And I think that that a firm's posture in this, whether you look at a standard like ISO that can be audited or a framework like NIST that you can comply with, mm -hmm. the, the best way to do that is through a, a piece of software. And, you know, you know, obviously cost and complexity, but the fact that a matter is, is that, that, you know, on track costs you basically the, the same as a summer associate, you know, is it worth being able to, is it worth being able to consolidate and manage, report, analyze, do everything in one, one plate, you know, one place for the cost of the summer associate? I would argue, yeah, absolutely. 
Sure. I really hope that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> sure, certainly. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you know, what does proper, you know, information security management look like in a law firm? I know it's a broad topic, but if we right. paint that, let's put some, you know, bookends on this conversation. What should a law firm be doing nowadays in broad strokes and how, how is OnTrack, you know, uh, how can OnTrack assist with that? Sure, sure. So, so um, you know, OnTrack was designed by security experts. And in fact, we, you know, one note is OnTrack was specifically developed as a result of the experience of getting a law firm certified in ISO 27001. Yeah. So when we talk about, you know, when, 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 when law firms take a look at what their specific needs were, were uh, coincidentally, on track happened to evolve from, from that experience. Um, and so it was designed with this idea that um, uh, managing information security well is a result of what we like to call security maturity. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that involves and I'll, it, basically six things that I'll quickly go through. The one is, is the first thing is, is you have to have a formal program and it needs to be implemented. Um, I, you know, firms do need to take it seriously um, and and make it part of what I usually call the muscle memory of the organization. Right. When you when you go park your car in the city, what's the first thing you do as you go? You click and you lock it. Right. You know, that, that's a secu- that's a security event. That's what you're doing. You're protecting your your automobile. And, and, you know, information security needs to be that sort of instinct. It isn't, but part of the reason is, is that it tends to be more complex and cumbersome than it needs to be if it were managed properly. So implement a compliance, pro- uh, a, a formal compliance program. Number two is, as you said, base it on a recognized framework or standard. So a uh, quick difference, a framework is like NIST. NIST is out there. It is very well recognized in the United States. NIST CSF, CSF is cybersecurity framework, is used by a number of companies as the basis. basis. Um, a framework, though, isn't, doesn't involve a formal third-party certification. ISO 27001, which is ISO's version of the information security standard does. You can, you can, if you are, you know, if you are on the road to ISO cert, ISO uh, compliance or using ISO as your compliance standard, you can be audited. So you have a stamp, stamp of approval by the ISO organization. Um, uh, and, and actually, its sister version, ISO 27701, which is a data privacy standard, is a very, very easy tack. So, however you do it. Um, go toward a standard even if you're even if you think you won't be able to meet that standard for two years it's important because they represent best practices and and i think that it starts to get an organization into the discipline of best practices for information security um so you know going back to that bridging the gap the third thing is is let's let's think about this thoughtfully in the sense that um, you know, you're not you're not interested in spending a million dollars for a thousand dollar risk, right? What you are interested in doing is analyzing where the biggest risks are, where your vulnerabilities are, and addressing them first. So it's triage approach to risk. The thing about a platform, again, like like OnTrack, is it allows you to assess and then manage that risk in easy steps as you start to bridge that gap. Um, so number four is obviously tools, not just an information security uh, management tool, but things like incident response tools and other uh, uh, information security tools need to be part of this program and think it through. And if, and if for some reason or other, for whatever, that might be cost or lack of expertise, right? Because we always talk in terms of money, but you don't necessarily talk in terms of, of skills and expertise, which are, which are uh, just as valuable. Um, but make sure all that stuff is is on the road roadmap and you have a comprehensive program. Um, the the fifth element of security maturity is that proof point to make sure that you can prove to your clients, in the case of a firm, your executive committee and the attorneys and any stakeholder within the organization that you are are um, uh, a compliant and it, you're thinking through the risks and addressing the risks inherent in the firm. And I think that's going to give everyone a tremendous amount of comfort. And then finally, uh, finally is number six is, is, as I said to you before, it's not a, it's not a, 
um, switch. It's a dial, but it's also not a one and done. Threats change. Your, your profile of risks change. So this needs to be something that is done on a regular basis. And, and again, a platform will help you uh, calendar and, and, and recognize that. I mean, you know, my suggestion is at a minimum, it needs to be addressed once a year. That tends to make it a bit of an onerous, onerous task for complicated or, you know, for, for larger organizations. But a few hours every, every three months, probably enough. Um, and again, once you get, we talked about holistic, once you get your arms around the program, it becomes so much easier and quite frankly, even less expensive to manage going forward. Yeah, I, I think those are phenomenal points, all of them. And and one thing that was surprising to me is my, my background, I didn't start in security, um, but obviously we've become very conversant in the details of it today for clients. And when you're pursuing a, a certification or really, like you said, the application of a framework to assess your security, I think there's a, an underlying concept or concern. It's kind of like, hey, I don't want to open Pandora's box because then I'm going to find out how bad we are, right? <laughs> um, you know, where are blind spots? Now, now, obviously, there's arguments for, hey, if you have blind spots, you need to address them. It's better to know than to not know. And any good lawyer would, would, would say the same for the most part. Um, but there's an interesting concept as you're pursuing compliance for ISO and you know, different certifications as such is that you don't have to be compliant across the board day one, right? Like you said, this is a dial. You start by taking assessment by a, a, a generally accepted standard, you know, that, have been made by, that has been made by actual security experts and confirmed by peers and then panels and all kinds of things like that, right? And so you, you start, and so many of the risks that we see in law firms at this point have to do with, with basic exposure points, um, things like, Obviously, emails, right? What's coming in? Is there executable code in an attachment? Is there a hyperlink? How do we control that? Uh, last last stat I read was that some 85% of all data breaches in a law firm come in by email or some sort of executable code, you know, interacted with by a user, right? That's a huge one, and there's very relevant solutions for it. In addition to that, most data theft doesn't happen at this point by actually hacking into a server and pulling data. It still happens by li literally stealing a device or taking someone's device, right? Right. And so as you get into the application of these standards, a lot of it has to do with, do you know what devices your law firm actually has? Right. Right. Attorney, you know, junior associate John over here, how many phones does this guy have actually accessing law firm data? Right, you have to know, and so much of it is just straight inventorying in the items. But you start with the inventory, and you, you start with the basic assessment. To understand, hmm, this is how my law firm operates. You know, this is these are all the different devices that we have accessing data. And now, with that in mind, how do we then begin to apply uh, a security policy and compliance, and and really just operational frameworks? If you were hacked, what do you do? You know, I think most people say. Yeah, I've got it under control. We do this, that. And do you really know? Do, do you have a framework for response? Do you know the extent as, as far as you have to go and what the time frames are? And so I would encourage everybody to look at it in the light of you don't have to go from zero to 100 day one. Now, like you said, this is maybe a couple of years you walk down this road. Right. But the important thing is to start. And there's a tremendous amount of value in starting that process today. And, and I want to highlight something, which is there's a lot of legal technology spend uh, and and like you know computer IT spend that is done somewhat arbitrarily and, and I think it's well intentioned by many partners and, and managing partners out there in that they have a trusted um, security professional they have a trusted advisor that comes in and says you need to do this 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 and this and, and, I, and that's not a bad place to start but it doesn't go far enough right because what we need to look at is how does our technology spend you know, coincide with the standards that we need to build for uh, a certification of some sort. How does that spend address our unique threat profile and use, even company culture, quite frankly, within my own practice? Uh, and so I, we always encourage clients to be informed before spending money. And that's a basic idea, but a lot of times the technology, it happens in reverse. You spend money on the shiny object, 
right. you think it's going to apply and then you find out, oh, wow, there's a great point of exposure that that didn't address. So we really want, want clients to look at that, apply that framework, even in a general sense, work with the security professional, whatever you need to do to have a, a defined path forward, even if it's a basic one, to start this journey. Mm -hmm. Agreed, 100%. Well, good. Well, good. Here's a, and I don't know if you have any stats for this. I'm going to throw this out there. Um, but with all the technology spend that's occurring, you know, I, I'm interested in, in finding out some numbers, you, you know, which is how much more does it cost to actually go down the road of compliance with your security as opposed to, you know, I have feel goods, right, about my security, so to say, right? Like, I love those blinky lights in the closet. That's going to get it done versus okay i spend 20 30 40 percent more or whatever and i can actually take it to the bank and advertise it to clients what's what's the spread on that if you have any information uh i do and and of course the caveat is every firm is different right, right. every firm's risk profile is different but to be honest what we've seen is that the use of a technology platform actually reduces the cost and pays for itself going forward. So, so your, your point, I mean, again, if the bridge is the bridge you have to cross is fairly large, right? Be reasonable about that, about that. Sit there and say, look, we're not going to be able to do this in six months. We're not going to, we're not going to willy nilly throw money at this. What we are going to do is we're going to take a measured approach and, and we're going to seek certification, say, in, in, or, or, or reach our end goal, whether that's certification, in, in two years. But the use of a platform immediately takes out man hours. Like any use of technology, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're making the people who are responsible for in your information security program a hell of a lot more efficient. And so what that allows you to do is not only to, to, to react quickly, but it will it, it should build in some level of cushion for you to take you know that savings and use it in a different way, or you know, you know take for the bank if you want to want yeah. to do that. But but um, you know, once you get to the end goal, once you feel that you're going to be um, um, you, what you want is an external audit in terms of sort of you know in terms of certification. The use of a platform will drastically reduce uh, that cost. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say that it's inexpensive, but that at least is a discrete cost. If you want that stamp of approval, you can make that judgment. But at that point, I can almost guarantee you that you're spending actually less time and money on your information security and getting substantially better results. Certainly. Well, and I, I would remind all of our viewers, too, that, you know, on track is not the stamp of certification. Right. It's the framework to apply. Right. And, and, and obviously we know that, but I think that there's some dissonance on that. You know, it's it's the discussion. It's the assessment and equipping you with information to assess your security posture, your processes and start the road to compliance, so to say, not the actual stamp of approval, you know, after a year or two of work whatever and there's a tremendous amount of value in simply purchasing a, a you know a solution like on track to help you assess your posture how many times does somebody go to a lawyer to say hey can you assess my risks right, right. i mean that's right. that's a, a huge amount of it right so how do we get that information applied correctly and, and that's on track and i would note you know one of the things uh, you you mentioned the managers it on track uh, at least our platform comes turnkey mm -hmm. in the sense that um, it has all the policies and procedures already included for ISO 27001 for NIST CSF or uh, other standards. We're actually compliant with, with, we have a HIPAA standard too as well, but, but obviously that doesn't affect law firms. But um, uh, so what you're getting out of the box isn't an, an empty Excel spreadsheet, so to speak, you're getting a fully functional end-to-end -end program that what you have to do is implement, right? Import via, you know, an Excel spreadsheet, your assets, your processes and procedures, go through the questions, and you're up and running extraordinarily quickly. So if you're worried, oh my goodness gracious, huh? I mean, I, I want to, I'd like to be, you know, go toward the goal of ISO certification or or I want to be compliant with NIST, but I have no idea where to stop it. That sounds expensive to develop a program around it. 
All included, baby. Turnkey, right there. That's right. So I think that's very. I think that that's something that I didn't mention earlier that I think is incredibly important to to, to highlight. And and do you all offer a trial of, of sorts so somebody can test drive the package? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a free trial. Um, I will provide the link uh, to everyone. Uh, and when you know when at the at the page that you see this, I will I will have make sure that there's a link there. And obviously, you can contact me or 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 the you know the audience can contact you and we can get that all set up. Sure, and we'll, we'll add that back into the video here for sure, Steve. Um, here's a Here's a parting thought that I wanted to, to close on here, and it is, you know, with, with the global pandemic, um, there's almost a new normal setting in, and, and so much of the conversation at first was really a kind of crisis aversion based. You know, how do, we, how, do we, how do we assess this? How do we abide by quarantine standards? How do we all play our part? And, and not that that's gone away, but, but, you know, you put a few months on this and all of a sudden, life has to continue revenue generation has to continue careers continue hey kids are going back to school too or they're not going back to school and so many of them are going remote at this point and, and doing yeah. learning and i think we all kind of looked on the outside in and say all right we, we can do two months of this you know or how about two weeks two months you know, right. but can, we do, can we do two years um I, I, a lot of the general assessments around how long does the pandemic last even when we got into it, you know, back in January, it was you know it's about 18 months, kind of minimum. Like we're we're not out of this thing yet. And so there's been a reality that's set into a lot of our law firms, especially with so many students not going back to a physical school, but committing to virtual learning for at least one semester, maybe two semesters, probably two semesters actually. That this is this is the new normal, and it's not going anywhere. I I imagine we will return to offices at the end of the day at some point. However, that's not now. And so long story short, what I wanted to say is for the bring your own desk environment, for the law firm that was on the periphery, that was looking in and saying, hey, surely this will pass and we'll return to a normal and surely my whole staff will be back in the office or at least not doing you know, virtual learning with their kids throughout the entire day, distracting them, right? What is your advice to those law firms that now have to get serious about compliance because what was a one or two month exposure point is now a one or two year exposure point that they must address and mitigate risk on? You know, that, <laughs> that I, I, a couple of things, right? So um, I'm, I'm a big believer in making the complex simple. So I think that I, I, so there's two parts to this, and I'd actually say there's a there's there's a hard part now and a worse part later, and I'll and I'll so I'm teasing you on the uh, to stick around just a little bit longer. I think the hard part is exactly what you say. How do you how do you manage that environment? Um, I think you manage that environment in in a similar way that you would try to manage it at work, which is understand it, bracket the risk, and then set expectations amongst your employees on what is expected, right? Um, one thing, for example, is, you know, you have, you potentially a law firm has an IT help desk or an IT uh, outsource IT help desk. You know, it's one thing to be able to develop, to, to address a very, very simple known environment. It's another thing to address all, like I said earlier, the, the variety of different at home situations. And you know, do, can you do you expect your paralegals to understand their IT setup at home? Some will, but some won't. So you have to be able to adapt that. So um, my suggestion is 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 uh, first, you have to understand. You can't, you cannot address any situation that you do not understand fully. Once you understand, then think, um, uh, give careful consideration to what you would like to have the ideal situation. Because this is going to be part of a transition. I mean, even you talk about, you know, the, 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 the uh, offices opening up. There are going to be a variety of feelings about people coming into the office and efficiency. I mean, what, do you, what happens when you get there? Uh, I, I'm someone who's relatively comfortable. I know a tremendous amount of people who are not. So, you know, how do you manage that? And what is, how, how does the firm take a, a stance about that? But if someone is uncomfortable coming back into the office, for example, 
then the law firm will have to sit there or any organization will have to sit there and say, look, you know, to do your job effectively, we need you to commit to do A, B, C, and D because not doing so risks exposure. So, you know, as we said earlier, uh, there was a rush to get business functioning, but now you got to put that genie back in the bottle and say, okay, guys, we're going to take a step back and we're going to understand what needs to be done. And this is what you need to commit to do. And, and for some people, that might mean, um, you know, providing a little bit of extra equipment for a work or home environment, right? You know, you right. want them to rely on that, the cheapest cable modem router setup that their cable company gave them? Or do you want to provide something that is a little bit more secure configured and doesn't have zero, 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 zero as the password or admin in all lower cases as the password to the main gateway of all the information going through through home. So I think that's really important to do. So step back and start to get control of the situation. And of course, you know, having a, uh, an information management uh, system, uh, security system, uh, uh, information security management system helps. The yeah. second thing is the worst part, which is the genie isn't going to go completely in the bottle. The pendulum will come back. You're going to get people back in the office, but you're not going to get them 100%. Now, I would posit that le the, the legal industry is a social um, profession. You're not going to make Law, you're not going to make partner remote. You're not going to make partner over Zoom. That's right. not going to happen. So, you know, the idea of getting back into the office is, is very, very incredible, uh, is incredible or, or, or important, I should say. But sure. you're going to have that hybrid worker. You're going to have that person who's going to work a few days in the home, a few days in the office. And for the lawyer and paralegal and anyone doing the job that uh, a law firm is going to demand from them, you can't have different situations where they can only function 50% in one environment and, a, you know, and 80% in another. And the reason you want to do 100%, for example, in the office is because you're doing this traveling back and forth. So uh, be thoughtful about what's coming down the, the, the pipe in terms of this idea of hybrid. 75% of workers say they like the idea of working from home, that that's going to be an important consideration. Well, that's going to be your law firm in the future, too. You know, whether it's attorneys, whether it's paralegals or everything else, they're going to want that level of flexibility. And it's a good idea. It's a perk for, for law firms to address that. But to do it, you have to be very, very conscious of, of the threats and vulnerabilities. Because as you said earlier, the different devices, every access point is a point of vulnerability. Yeah, I, I think it's well said. And, and it starts with information. You know, when I first started working with attorneys, um, there was an introduction for me to, to understand the difference between uh, what might be perceived as a, a lawyer being flippant about a risk and just kind of being disinterested, I don't care about it, right, as opposed to not understanding it legitimately. Um, and, and I think lawyers in particular, you know, once they understand in detail that there is a risk or even just understand the concept, they're a very, very good steward of that concept. Uh, you know, so much of what they do is risk assessment and risk mitigation for clients that that's natural for them, right? Um, it's only lack of information typically that doesn't lead them down that road to assess their own law firm. And so I, I see the same thing. I, I see the necessity of, of information, a, a general simplistic framework being used to assess a law firm, right? To assess the devices, to assess the security posture, and to create a roadmap for a path forward that leads through the work from home, work from office, hybrid environment, and to be confident with it, right? Uh, there's even elements too of, of, of saying, and, and who knows quite how far this goes, but what, what do you do to actually downsize office space? Uh, that's one of the, the, the main expenses, you know, outside of salaries, right? The main expenses right. that a law firm has is maintaining class A office space. What if you downsize that footprint and then reallocate resources? Um, a lot of those have to be distributed back to information governance. So a lot of, lot of new normal concepts going on there. Uh, overall, there's savings if done right, but we have to start with information uh, and, and really go down that road. And, and I would close on this here is to say, you know, to recap, OnTrack provides that standard, um, the framework from which to assess your practice and, and inform your security making decisions. You can use OnTrack 
to begin the assessment. It has the templates. It has all the governance necessary to, to understand what does the path to compliance look like. And you can even bring that to your IT provider, right? And it, and it starts a very informed, uh, um, sophisticated conversation about what to do. We can add to that different solutions that, that we offer to clients, you know, document management systems, even endpoint management, security and email and items along those lines that really once combined with a solution like OnTrack creates a very, very effective platform for security, you know, information security management, as well as work from home, work from office, work from anywhere type environments. And so I, I think I would communicate this is all far more doable than most people understand. The thing is to take that first step and to begin to engage it. And the first step begins with informing yourself and really on track is one of the best ways to do that. I would agree. Well, I, I love the conversation. I uh, hope to do it again and kind of have a follow up, another check in with you, you know, three months, six months down the road to see what does, is this, has the new normal gone away or is it the new normal, <laughs> right? I, I think we'll have like, like everything in life, the, the end result will be somewhere in the middle, right? But, but there's definitely been some changes that are going to be permanent here um, and, and affect the practice of law. So I, I appreciate your input. I, again, again, Steve Hen with uh, Oreos uh, regarding the solution on track. Uh, your insights were, were, were very effective. Um, thanks again for your time. We'll post up the links after the fact here. And again, if anybody has questions, I'm, I'm happy to put you in touch with Steve. Um, obviously, a, a great guy to connect with, very knowledgeable and a good conversationalist as well. Also, uh, Aaron here with Inertia Legal, happy to talk about document management, um, information security, um, even you know, endpoint email management, case management for law firms. We do legal tech at Inertia Legal. Uh, and the door's open for a conversation. Love to talk with you. Thanks a lot, Eric. Good luck. Thank you, Steve. Take care. Take care.